There is no better person to talk to women inside of the C-suite than Dr. Tara Swart, PhD in neuroscience, medical doctor turned leadership coach. We're at the campus and we're about to chat to her now about the phenomenal work she's doing to help women unleash the unlimited potential of the mind. You know, your PhD in neuroscience and mm -hmm. your ability to help people expand their horizons and mm -hmm. thinking around the brain's potential to help in leadership mm -hmm. is really phenomenal work. Your book, Neuroscience for Leadership, is doing really well. I really enjoyed the book. Thank you. Tell us one or two things that every woman should know if they're going to thrive inside of the C-suite. Okay, so the reality is that it's still the case that 80 to 90 percent of people in the C-suite are male. So the first thing is that you're outnumbered as a woman. And we know that the um, ideal number of women on a board is three. Usually it's just one, maybe two. So it's hard to get your voice heard. And actually the one critical factor that makes a difference in the success of senior women is confidence. And obviously by the time you're on the C-suite, you'd think you're already more confident than the average woman. But in terms of things like hormonal changes, say after having children, um, there can be a significant knock to the confidence of senior women. And the trick is that confidence isn't something that you either have or you don't. It's something that you need to keep topped up. So basically, it's about focusing on your own past successes. If you don't have a success in a particular area, look for another woman that's done what you want to do and tell yourself that it's possible. It's also about your self-talk. So if we tell ourselves we're not sure that we can do things, that's likely to become reality. If we believe that we can, if we act like we can until we make it, that actually really helps our brain. And finally, it's about the physiological conditions that keep your brain and body in peak performance. So being well rested, eating right, keeping hydrated, doing exercise, etc. One of the things that I have picked up from your work is that you really believe that the potential from a woman and a man is basically identical. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have felt that for a long time, but the science really backs that up now. There are some differences in the way that people may have attitudes or assumptions or values or the way that they may behave, but there's no fundamental reason that people can't cross um, those boundaries and behave in any way. Now you've worked globally. You, you teach at MIT, you're based in the UK. You've seen the whole world. What are some of the things that make women in South Africa and on this beautiful continent different? So I think there's a, actually a long-standing history in society of women running the household, women actually working very hard and, and often at times being the breadwinner of the family but being very much um, not necessarily appreciated for that in terms of how society views the role of women. I think in countries where they've made a real effort to um, have equal maternity and paternity leave, have more gender neutral clothing and toys, it's changing the way that women are viewed in society. Now, the, this idea of plasticity, the mm -hmm. brain's ability to sort of change itself and evolve, this is a real sort of breakthrough in science. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about how we can expect to be able to change. Okay. So we used to think that our brain actively shaped and grew itself until we were about 18 and that then we were pretty much stuck with what we've got in terms of our mental ability. We know now that every experience, every smell, every memory, every relationship actively moulds our brains until we're at least 25. From 25 to 65, there are things that you can do to keep your brain more plastic and flexible. The best things you can do in adulthood are learn a new language or learn a musical instrument. The other things like crosswords and Sudoku, they're not really attention intense enough, but okay. it's better than not doing any, sure. you know, any new learning. Um, if you start around, let's say at the latest 40, making sure that you sleep enough, you do lots of exercise, you keep learning, you have positive social relationships, you can actually do something to slow down the inevitable aging process after the age of 65. The next couple chapters in sort of the leadership space, let's say over the next 20 years, mm -hmm. women are really going to make a big dent. I mean, there have been several studies like the Goldman Sachs Power of the Purse study that show that women are going to be earning more. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is going to have implications in terms of emasculate, men feeling emasculated. What are some things that women can do in terms of, you know, just sort of keeping things balanced in terms of managing sort of the home and the work and mm -hmm. that type of thing? You know, I think it always comes down to things that women and men can do. You know, if this doesn't happen together, it. it's going to be harder. 
I think what's in our favour is that these things do tend to happen over quite a slow peri long period of time, so they happen sure. quite slowly. So if we think about how much the female demographic has changed in the workplace, say, since the 50s, um, that's been actually 70 years now. So that's relatively quick and it does take our brains quite a long time to catch up with that. But I think if we're more aware of that, if we make ourselves more adaptable to change, both men and women, then that's one of the things that we'll be able to manage more easily because actually technology is happening to all of us and that's probably the biggest challenge that we'll face in the next two decades. So, the, you know, one of the big breakthroughs in sort of science is really understanding the power of sort of simplicity. Mm -hmm. What are some of your thoughts on that? Well, we live in such a complex world with so much information overload and our brain actually doesn't like that. Even after a good night's sleep, we wake up with a bucket of cognitive resources that isn't actually unlimited. And every time we think about what should I have for breakfast, what should the kids wear today, you're using up that bucket before you even get to work. So for working mums particularly, think about what you're going to wear and lay that out the night before. Think about what the kids are going to wear, choose it the night before when you, you don't need to make any more big important decisions. And maybe stick to quite a lot of routine, like the same breakfast, keep timing similar, and just try to set it up, set yourself up well for success before the morning that you have to go to work. So managing sort of the investment of that load. Yeah. It's at that I find that really, really fascinating. But it gets really difficult, especially with social media and technology and mm. all of those things. Do you do you think people should manage their time online? They should manage and sort of carve out specific time they spend online or do they should be checking in and out the whole day? I think that's quite an individual thing, but there are a few rules that you that you know you can stick by. One is no screens with blue lights for one hour before bed because that prevents you release, releasing the hormone that helps you to fall asleep and that would be the same for the children. Also, it's okay to spend a lot of time online as long as you also spend a lot of time face to face. So, you know, family meals around the table, eye contact with your children and your friends and family, not just all on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. Sure. Just finally, your, your book, Neuroscience for Leadership, should a person get this book and start from the beginning or is there a space in the book that depends on the person where they should start? So I'm very relaxed about things like that. I think, you know, if you're the kind of person that reads a book all the way through, you can do that. But it's definitely designed to, for each chapter to be read as and when it suits you and okay. in any, any order. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Dr. Tara Swart has proven that the mind truly is unlimited. Her work in neuroscience for leadership is showing that women can do anything you want to do inside of the C-suite and continue making a difference.